When I arrived here two years ago, I articulated a vision for Valley Beth Shalom, that it was our place, it was indeed our responsibility to become the social and cultural Jewish center for Southern California. And so in the last week alone, we have welcomed author Gil Troy to the congregation. He spoke with adults, and he began a process of educating our youth about Israel's story as well. We welcomed a former member of the Knesset, Dove Lipman, to the community, who talked about his life's journey and life's work. And this morning, I'm awfully proud to bring Andrea Levin, Executive Director of CAMERA, to our community. So many of the questions of the last several weeks has revolved around how we consume media. It has pointed us to this moment of having an adult conversation about what media tells us and what media does not. Andrea Levin is Executive Director and President of CAMERA, Committee for Accuracy in Middle East Reporting and Analysis, the organization she has directed for 35 years. A former editor of Public Policy Journal at Harvard, Ms. Levin writes and lectures widely on media coverage of the Arab-Israeli conflict and its impact on public opinion. Her columns and articles have appeared in newspapers and magazines such as the Wall Street Journal, Jerusalem Post, Boston Globe, International Herald Tribune, New York Post, New Republic, Middle East Quarterly, National Post, and Commentary. Camera, the oldest and largest Middle East media monitor in the world, pioneered a mix of academic level research and public activism to combat false information about the Jewish state that undermines sympathy for Israel, distorts public policy, and fuels anti-Semitism. Camera with offices in Boston, New York, Washington, D.C., Palm Beach, and Jerusalem has expanded internationally to monitor UK media as well as Spanish language, Hebrew, and Arabic media as well. Camera's partnership of Christians and Jews counters misinformation in Christian media and promotes mutual efforts to combat anti Semitism together. Camera launched its Education Institute in 2021 expanding its long-standing campus and K-12 through work to meet the challenges of anti-Israel propaganda in the classroom. It is an honor and a privilege to welcome Andrea Levin to Valley Beth Shalom. Thank you, Rabbi, for the kind introduction. I'm very honored to be here at an important moment in, the, in this beautiful, beautiful synagogue and to congratulate you on the bumper crop of babies <laughs> that we have celebrated today. I'm grateful to be among others who are likely also consumed day and night by the epic events in the Middle East. So I was tell, asked to tell you a bit about what we're doing and let me begin by saying that in my 35 years at the helm of the organization, there has never been a more challenging time in terms of the scale and ferocity of biased, dangerous co media coverage. Fundamentally, as you probably all well know, what is happening in the coverage is that the barbaric attack of October 7th is being largely forgotten in the framing of the ongoing story. And instead, the just war Israel is fighting has been turned into a supposed genocide against the Palestinians, and those absurd false accusations are mindlessly repeated every hour in global reporting. Camera was founded in the knowledge that lies and distortion about Israel disseminated through the media will affect the hearts and minds of the public. And misconceptions such as that Israel is brutal and oppressive, unwilling to live in peace with Palestinians, 
can do great harm. Tackling the sources of errors and distortions, the reporters, editors, producers, anchors who promote them, can remove falsehoods and deter more of the same. That is what we do. We expose, challenge, correct, and educate in a multifaceted, complex, and continuous process. Whether we're criticizing hostile, inaccurate coverage by Christian Amanpour, feel free to boo, on CNN, or Daniel Estrin on NPR, or, or bias by the New York Times' Raja Abdul Rahim. <laughs> Always, we are holding journalists to their own standards of accuracy and accountability. We focus on facts, and I should add, we do not take political positions. We've elicited thousands of corrections over the last several years. Often, they're serious errors, and setting the record straight is important, especially in influential media. Sometimes, an important error corrected is never again reported, misreported, and lesser outlets follow suit in getting the issue correct. Most readers or viewers never see the correction, of course, but it's the impact internally on the media outlet that matters most. Also, the removal of errors that would live online forever is critically important. Many times over the years, to make our point emphatically, especially if there had been no action on a serious issue, we've sponsored billboards, ad trucks, full-page ads, publicizing the false reporting. We produced short videos and held conferences, and of course now webinars too. Right now, we have a billboard facing the New York Times, their newsroom, with the poster image of Kafir Bibas, the red-haired baby who was kidnapped from Israel with his brother and mother. It says, quote, kidnapped. Hamas's culture of hate caused this. Why does the New York Times downplay anti-Semitic incitement in Palestinian society? 100,000 people pass by the intersection every day and the billboard has been there for two months. And if you go into the Starbucks nearby, you hear people talking about it. We also own shares in all the major media that concern us. And we've attended shareholder meetings many times where we've addressed audiences about the flawed coverage uh, that, that the, the company is producing. We also work in partnership with 20,000 activists who receive our alerts and information on a weekly basis and add their voices to the call for accuracy and full context in coverage of Israel. Our letter writers are incredibly prolific and eloquent. Many times, if you're reading a compelling letter making the case for Israel in a major publication, the author is a camera letter writer. Often, there, if there are five such letter writers, every one of them is a camera writer. It's important that readers not only learn from the content of, in the letters, but that it be clear Israel has many proud vocal supporters and defenders. So Camera is the oldest and largest Middle East media monitoring organization in the world. And as the rabbi said, with departments focused on the English-speaking media in America, the UK, Canada, and Australia, as well as on the vast Spanish world, El Pais is a major target of ours. The influential Israeli Hebrew media, Haaretz. The Arab, Arabic division, divisions of Western media, such as BBC Arabic. Camera employs nearly 60 staff, and we're hiring, in case you know of good candidates. It's no coincidence that we were founded in 1982 during the first Lebanon War, 42 years ago. And, the, and an anecdote about that crisis illuminates the enormous power of the media to shape events and the great need for our work. Ronald Reagan, who was president during that war, picked up a paper 
the Washington Post, and he saw a UPI photograph that had been, dis had been distributed globally, allegedly of an infant girl with her arms blown off in an Israeli bombing, horrified by the heart-rending photo of the swaddled baby, the president angrily deplored Israeli action and told President uh, Prime Minister Menachem Begin the symbol of the war was becoming a baby with its arms blown off. He demanded Israel modify its actions, but in fact, however, the photo caption was false. The child was a Christian boy named Eli Masu, not a girl. Both arms were intact. The baby had minor fractures and recovered completely, and it was not Israel that bombed the neighborhood. Israel was completely innocent. The explosion of reckless inflammatory media coverage of the Lebanon War was the first of its kind in scale since the founding of the State of Israel, and it was the trigger for the launching of CAMERA. The direct impact of biased, false reporting on policy makers was a powerful lesson, and there have been many more such. Of course, the U.S. administration, along with, other, along with other Western allies of Israel, right now, today, is being influenced by the incessant distorted claims that there is, for instance, famine in Gaza. There is no famine in Gaza. Likewise, the completely erroneous and distorted claims of genocide against the Palestinians are undoubtedly having an impact on policymakers, even though this too is a libelous falsehood. I think it's fair to say we can see the impact in real time of several fundamental lies. There's been no indiscriminate targeting of civilians at all, and even Hamas's numbers, which are impossible to verify, suggest, as I'm sure you've heard, an extremely low ratio of civilian, civilians to combatants killed. Israel has been successfully targeting fighters. Camera has also long been involved on the campuses. Just heard that one of our the president of your conversation, uh, con congregations son was uh, once uh, one of our interns. So we've been long, and that's some years ago. Um, our first campus newsletter was published in 1990. It is truly fascinating to read that old issue and see that elements of the crisis we see today were already germinating. A visiting Israeli basketball team at the University of Michigan in Dearborn in 1990 was hounded off the floor. What we see now is a nationwide expansion of that bigoted aggression against Jewish students. For many years, we have worked directly with students on North American, British, and Israeli campuses, providing them high-level informational materials, funding for programs, speakers, and close moral support, and an all-expense-paid trip to Boston in the summer for a training conference. The Camera Fellows Program is a competitive fellowship that trains students in how to educate their peers in writing and campus programming about Israel. Right now, as we speak, students are encountering the so-called apartheid weeks filled with anti-Israel propaganda on many American campuses. We created a new roll-up uh, panel displays, great big gigantic things that stand on the, on the campus, on the quads. And they have some tough messages. The, some of the students struggle with that, but most of them and most of our students' group, groups want to display them. They're going up on the Harvard campus next week for three days. You know, I'm sure, that one of the poisonous themes loudly espoused by anti-Jewish propagandists is that Palestinians, not Jews, are the indigenous people of the land. Perhaps because these claims are so ludicrous, weak, and indefensible, and because there's so much evidence that many Palestinians are actually newcomers to the region, there is great sensitivity on this topic. All the more reason, of course, that the facts should be displayed regularly. 
So one of our panels displays images of ancient artifacts with menorahs and Hebrew references to Zion found in the land of Israel, just to help make sure there's no doubt on the matter. Our young are vulnerable and need us at all levels of education. And so three years ago, we launched the Camera Education Institute to address the insidious biases poisoning all too many of our schools. We published a first of its kind monograph on a biased curriculum in the Newton, Massachusetts schools about 10 years ago, and so it built on those beginnings. Today we have eight staff members, including several truly brilliant educators. I was interested to hear all about the educators here. They've testified recently in Congress about anti-Semitism in schools, help parents and teachers in school districts in New York, Massachusetts, California, Virginia, and Maryland, and we are interviewing candidates to expand this effort. Lastly, at a time such as this, with rising anti-Semitism, our partnership of Christians and Jews department is more important than ever. Our director, Tricia Miller, just this week, wrote a powerful rebuttal to an anti-Semitic Palestinian guest featured on Tucker Carlson's podcast, Munther Isaac, pastor of Bethlehem Bible College, is well known to us. He claims Israel persecutes Christians in the region, fueling animosity towards the Jewish state. As you probably know, Israel is the one safe place in the Middle East for Christians, and their numbers are growing. Trisha is also interviewed extensively in global media, working to counter the insidious efforts to turn Christians, including evangelical Christians, against the Jewish state. So we're also organizing interfaith action-oriented groups starting in Florida, where Trisha is based, to speak out against anti-Semitism. That is a very quick summary of our work in the battle for truth about the Jewish state, and I thank you very much. Thank you.